For over a decade, the Surfrider Foundation has been tackling plastic pollution head on. Hundreds of thousands of volunteers have participated in over 3,000 beach cleanups, removing close to 1 million pounds of trash from our beaches and waterways. At the same time, Surfrider has taken up the political fight against plastics and has achieved more than 300 victories to reduce plastic pollution since 2007. As successful as that has all been, it's not enough to keep up with the constant flood of plastic pollution entering our environment every minute of every day. But how did we get here? The first synthetic plastic was produced in 1907, which marked the beginning of the global plastics industry. But rapid growth in plastic production didn't happen until World War II due to the military's need for durable and low-cost products. Then in the 1950s, manufacturers incorporated plastics into everyday products to make them more accessible and cheaper to consumers. Today, plastic production has skyrocketed to over 381 million tons annually. Plastic is everywhere. It's in our air, it's in our ocean, littering our beaches, and it's even in the food we eat. We must act now to slow the flow of plastics into our environment before it's too late. The Break Free from Plastic Pollution Act is incredibly important because it addresses plastic pollution throughout the entire life cycle, from production all the way to disposal. And it includes everything that we know works at the state and local level. So bag laws, straws upon request policy, foam food wear bans, bottle deposits, all of those are included and we're pushing for additional things like a moratorium on plastic production facilities. This policy really looks at plastic from a bird's eye view and includes policies to address every aspect of what we can do to solve this plastic pollution crisis. The Break Free from Plastic Pollution Act really began as the great success that we've had on the ground with the local chapters. So this local bag ban that happened in San Francisco in 2007 and how over 100 happened in California before the statewide law. We had data from how those things worked and how they actually got rid of litter, got rid of the trash we see on our beaches and in our coastlines. And we partnered up with UCLA Environmental Law Clinic. Angela and I were talking back in 2018 about how could we advocate for comprehensive federal plastics legislation. And so we started thinking about how we at the Environmental Law Clinic could produce some information, some education that would be helpful. So we put together a really amazing briefing booklet. Two of our wonderful students, Divya Rao and Harula Melyu, put together an amazing briefing booklet for legislators. So when we got the assignment, the first question was, well, what's happening right now with single-use plastics? And I was so surprised and inspired by the amount of work that had already been done at the local level throughout the United States. This project has just evolved beyond my wildest dreams. I never imagined going to Washington, D.C. and lobbying on legislation. And I think just communicating about this, this issue, which is so vital and interconnected with our daily lives, is a story that so many people can relate to. So what we've seen at Surfrider when we talk to members of Congress is that usually they understand, you know, keeping litter out of the environment, making things beautiful so people can continue to spend their tourist dollars and protect the environment. However, they are also very keen to listen to people about the economic arguments. So possibly opposition talking about the jobs they already have in their district, making expanded polystyrene foam, making plastic, and that is definitely a valid argument. We don't want people to lose jobs. However, these manufacturing plants can retool. They can make reusable products that do belong in this new circular economy and can save jobs and go in the right direction. Because right now, this system is completely broke. And I was most excited about the comprehensive approach. Mm -hmm. We're not just gonna do styrofoam, we're not just gonna do single-use plastic bags. We were really gonna step back and really look at everything that had to do with it. Who was responsible for the, for the issue? How are we going to really have the resources to really to change this? How are we going to impact the source? The Break Free from Plastic Pollution Act is more than just a piece of federal legislation. It's a vision for the future of what we want the world to look like and how we can address the plastic pollution crisis with policy. It's great for representatives and senators to get behind the legislation. And right now we have 
I believe, 13 co-sponsors in the Senate and uh, 112 in the House. So it's wonderful to have this momentum and this show of support. And what they're doing is really listening to their constituents and seeing what's worked in their own states and their own localities and bringing that to DC. Because while litter can be a very local problem, it's on your beach, it's something that affects us all. And the plastics industry should really be regulated at this higher stage. Yeah, so I think that, you know, politicians want to hear from their constituents and so people that help them get a seat at where they are now. Um, and I think that they also like to see wins. And so being able to show these wins at the local level um, makes them more comfortable. I think that, you know, a lot of times if they don't know what they're getting into, they don't know what the outcomes are going to be like, I think they're a little bit hesitant they're a little bit more risk averse. And so being able to show the different states and local policies that are working. Um, and I think showing them data and research is helpful. I think economic impacts are really helpful too. So being able to show that, you know, creating a reuse refillable system creates X number of jobs is better than what's going on with the disposable culture and what kind of jobs that holds. I think that's really important. The number one thing that everyone can do since the bill was reintroduced in March um, is to definitely call their representative to make sure that the bill continues to proceed and is passed. You can make your voice heard and help stop the flow of plastic into our environment by contacting your federally elected officials and encouraging them to support the Break Free From Plastic Pollution Act. Together, we can turn the tide on plastic pollution 